Welcome to Reporters Roundtable. I'm David Cruz, along with a crack panel of State House watchers. Stacey Sherman is Deputy Managing Editor for U.S. Bureaus for Bloomberg. Charlie Style is the political columnist for The Record, USA Today Network. And Matt Friedman is a reporter for Politico and author of the New Jersey Playbook. Heading now into the final stretch of this governor's race, and with the increasing intensity comes a call for civility, which has become a quaint notion in our modern political discourse. But one lawmaker has been calling for a more civil tone, and in light of this week's less than civil debate. We thought we'd get some thoughts from that lawmaker today, and his name is Assemblyman Republican Leader John Bramnick. Leader, good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us today. Morning, David. I, I got to tell you, the more you call for people to be nice, the less it seems people want to be nice. Well, it's not necessarily being nice. How about respectful? I'm listening to the debate, and I can't hear the answer because people are screaming from the audience. Do you actually think that someone screaming from the audience is going to affect anyone's opinion on the candidates? I mean, show, I mean, what is it, sixth grade? You know, shut up, sit there, give respect to the candidates, listen to their answer. I would have cleared the entire auditorium and said, listen, if you can't act, if you act like babies, we're going to throw you all out. That's what I would have said. Are you one of those people who thinks that there should be no audience at debates? There should be a respectful audience or they should be excluded. It's not fair to people who are watching it home. You know, they want to hear the answer. They don't care what uh, partisans think, especially the people in the middle. People who are independent. You know, they want they want to hear the answers. I understand certain people have made up their mind, but to be respectful of the people who have not. Someone said this week that people have been cooped up for the last year and a half and are just acting out now in public. Oh, that's the answer? You're cooped up? Well, how about being mature? You're being cooped up, so you have to scream and yell uh, while someone's answering a question or when one of, the pa one of the panelists, such as yourself, is asking a question? I mean, come on, that's no excuse. I mean, either grow up or, or don't sit there. I, I, I don't get it because I don't, he's, he's still a governor, he's still a former assemblyman running for office. Let them speak. And if you disagree with their answer, go to the voting ballot and vote against the guy. That's all. How much responsibility do you think uh, the media have for the tone of our politics? Well, I think the media wants, you know, some kind of controversy because they don't want things that are boring. One of the reasons they wouldn't let me go on MSNBC or Fox is because I would try to answer the question and they would and I get a call from my consultant says, you know, they're not going to put you on because you're not being extreme. So I understand. I mean, you need some controversy. I, I mean, that's that's what exists. But you don't need the controversy from the audience. You need it from the answers to the questions and from the candidates, not from some partisan sitting out there with cat calls. We talked with former Governor Christy Whitman uh, this week on Chatbox, and she puts most of this on former President Trump. Is she right? I think part of it goes to Trump. I mean, he made whatever situation we had worse by calling people names, talking about John McCain. I think he deserves, you know, some of the unfortunate uh, credit for this mess. Uh, not 100 percent, but he surely didn't help anything out. And he actually made it OK to kind of be mean. And some people like it. I hate it. She said also that any organized Republican Party, state, local, uh, uh, county level, federal level, any organized Republican Party is a party of Trump. A, do you see that as the case? And B, does that need to change in order for the discourse to become maybe a little more civil? Well, in New Jersey, if we want to win, we surely can't be the party of Donald Trump. Um, the way he polls in this state and the way he acts, he'll never be acceptable in New Jersey. So, yes, we have to reject that kind of 
attitude that he has, the kind of name calling that he has, the arrogance that he has. If we're going to win as Republicans, you know, you can act like it doesn't exist and then we'll stay in the minority party forever. Charlie, you wanted to jump in here with a question? No, my question for John is that, you know, you've been critical of Trump of Trump's conduct, um, but uh, what about his uh, constant stoking of this uh, of conspiracy theories about the 2020 election? And do you think that Donald Trump has undermined public faith in the democratic process? Well, two questions. One, yeah, he acts like it was a legitimate election, despite the back, his fact that federal courts have said it was absolutely legitimate. So that's craziness. But when you read the books about him, he never stops. I've read all those books and he just continues whatever agenda he has, he never backs off. So that's what he did here. The fact that people follow that nonsense is ridiculous. I mean, federal courts are very, very significant, credible, ethical courts. And they've rejected all of that nonsense. It's time for him to stop also and stop Republicans from acting like it wasn't a legitimate election. I said that immediately after. And, you know, you catch all that heat. I don't really care. I mean, the truth is the truth. Biden won the election. That's it. It's not that complicated. All right, let me get a quick look at this governor's race. Uh, Assemblyman, I'm assuming you're a Chidorelli guy. What's his case? And, and has he made it? I think he's made the case. He faces two obstacles. The overhang of the Trump, Trump feelings that people don't trust Republicans in New Jersey because of Trump and COVID. The polling shows that Murphy was pretty comfortable in terms of his lead on handling COVID. So those are the two issues that Jack has to deal with. Jack's right on taxes. Jack's right on the economy. Jack's right on being reasonable as a leader in the state. But he has a tough time because of those two issues. I mean, and you, you got to talk about those two issues because those are the issues I think that voters I think have, and there's a reason I think that uh, Murphy's been ahead. I think those are the two issues. And, and lastly, uh, Monmouth has Murphy up by nine to 13 points. Is it closer than that, do you think? Yeah, I think it is. And it gets closer as you get closer to November 2nd. But I also believe that we have to redefine the Republican Party and we have to do that quickly in order for us to win and be a statewide party, uh, be successful and also become the governor. And I think that's our uphill battle. And that's what Jack faces. All right, Assembly Republican Leader John Bramnick. Thanks, man, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everybody.